Since the turn of the 21st century, human origins textbooks have been rewritten repeatedly. Just 20 years ago, no one could have imagined what scientists know two decades later about humanity's deep past, let alone how much knowledge could be extracted from a thimble of dirt, a sample of dental plaque, or satellites in space. 2019 was one of the most prolific years in the last two decades when it comes to archaeological discoveries. As the second decade of the 21st century comes to an end, let's take a quick look at some of the most important archaeological finds from the year. At the beginning of the year on January 2nd, the headline read, Pre-Aztec Temple to Flayed Lord Fertility God Depicted as Skinned Human Corpse. Mexico's National Institute of Anthropology and History said the find was made during recent excavations of Popoloca Indian ruins in the central state of Puebla. The institute found two skull-like stone carvings and a stone trunk depicting the god Zepe Totec. It had an extra hand dangling off one arm, suggesting the god was wearing the skin of a sacrificial victim. Priests worshipped Zepetotec by removing the skins of human victims and wearing them. The ritual was seen as a way to ensure fertility and regeneration. On January 31st, we found out that Neanderthals and Denisovans, both relatives of modern humans, were roommates, literally, for thousands of years in a remote Siberian cave. Back in ancient times, this cave would have been a real estate agent's paradise. It's the only place in the world that Neanderthals, Denisovans, and possibly even modern humans lived together throughout history. The cave was so popular that hominins lived there almost continuously over both warm and cold periods during the past 300,000 years. In early February, 50 mummies dating back to the Ptolemaic era were discovered. The mummies, of which 12 were children, were found in four burial chambers, 9 meters, or 30 feet deep, in the Tuna el Gebel site in Minya, south of the capital of Cairo. Some were wrapped in linen, others were in stone coffins or wooden sarcophagi. Their identities were unknown, officials said, but they were likely to have held important positions. On February 7th, two decorated Roman lead coffins were uncovered during recent work at a quarry in Surrey. Both coffins were made from soldered sheets of cast lead, and their lids were decorated with images of scallop shells set within triangles and rectangles formed from beaded straps. Scallop motifs are common decorations on the lids of Roman lead coffins, particularly on those found in the Thames Valley area. It is believed they were associated with the Roman idea of the journey to the underground, but in Romano-Celtic culture, it may also refer to fertility and rebirth. On February 13th, it was announced excavations carried out by an Egyptian mission at the Tel Abu Sifi archaeological site in northern Sinai uncovered the remains of a limestone building that was once a workshop for the construction and repair of boats and vessels during the Ptolemaic and Roman periods. The site is said to have been the location of the Roman fortress Scylla. The workshop includes two dry dockyards where ships were built or repaired. At the end of February, archaeologists and workers unearthed an 11 and a half foot tall sphinx from a deep pit of quarry debris dumped near Aswan during the Roman era. The Sphinx was sitting in an ancient carving workshop where the team also found hundreds of stone fragments holding hieroglyphs and a carving of a coiled up cobra that once crowned the Sphinx. The statue's presence at the quarry is something of a mystery, but it might have been a canceled order. The evidence suggests that the Sphinx was carved around the end of the reign of Pharaoh Amenhotep III who was King Tut's grandfather.
On March 25th, a trove of Aztec sacrifices, including a richly adorned jaguar dressed as a warrior, was recently discovered in downtown Mexico City. The find could lead archaeologists to the most tantalizing find yet, an Aztec emperor's tomb. Discovered off the steps of the Aztec's holiest temple during the reign of the empire's most powerful ruler, the sacrificial offerings also include a young boy dressed to resemble the Aztec war god and solar deity, and a set of flint knives elaborately decorated with mother-of-pearl and precious stones. On March 26, it was announced that archaeologists uncovered more than 100 ancient inscriptions carved into rock at Wadi El Hudi, where the ancient Egyptians mined amethyst. Archaeologists can tell that many of the inscriptions date back around 3,900 years, to a time that modern-day archaeologists call the Middle Kingdom. Also on March 26, archaeologists claim to have found a 3,000-year-old port where stones were transported to be used in the building of temples and obelisks. The Antiquities Ministry said that the port was located near the Gebel el Sicilla archaeological site in Upper Egypt, near the southern city of Aswan. It says that the port dates back to the 18th dynasty, which ruled from 1543 to 1292 BCE. On April 1st, it was no joke when a French archaeological team announced it had discovered the remains of a lost ancient city at Kunara in what is now Iraqi Kurdistan near the Zergras Mountains. According to researchers, the city may have been an important center of ancient mountainous people called the Lulubi. On April 11th, it was announced that ancient bones and teeth found in the Kaleo Cave in the Philippines led to the discovery of a previously unknown species related to humans called Homo luzonensis. The fossils belonged to two adults and one child who lived between 50,000 and 67,000 years ago. This time frame means luzonensis would have lived at the same time as Neanderthals, Denisovans, Homo sapiens, and the small-bodied Homo floresensis. Like other extinct hominins, Luzonensis is more of a close relative than a direct ancestor. In mid-April, we learned of the tomb of a 5th dynasty dignitary that was discovered earlier in the month during an excavation and documentation survey carried out in southern Saqqara. The tomb consists of a superstructure with an L-shaped offering chamber, which was once decorated with reliefs. Only the bottom part of this decoration is preserved, as the white limestone blocks of the other parts were reused in the construction of other buildings in antiquity. On May 4th, it was announced that a tomb dating back 2,500 years was discovered in Giza, containing a limestone statue of one of the owner's family. The tomb dates back to the 5th dynasty. The tomb belonged to two men. The first man was named Benui Ka and had seven titles, including that of priest, judge, and the purification priest of Shefrin. The second was named Wai and had five titles, including chief of the great state, the overseer of the new settlements, and the purifier of King Khafre. On May 14th, we learned that the Egyptian archaeological expedition at Tal al Kidwa in North Sinai uncovered the remains of two towers of a military fortress dating back to the 26th dynasty. This is the oldest historic fortress discovered in Sinai and represented the eastern gate of Egypt and the only fortress controlling entry and exit to and from the country during the late period of ancient Egypt. On May 18th, an incredibly rare Roman coin was found in England. It depicts Ulpius Cornelius Laelianus, 
who reigned for about two months in 269 AD before he was killed. Archaeologist Steve Sherlock said the significant find was only the second of its kind to be unearthed in England. The coin shows Laelianus wearing a radiant crown and was found in a ditch at a small Roman farmstead by archaeologists. On May 22, the Alabama Historical Commission announced that a wrecked ship off the Gulf Coast is the Clotilda, the last known vessel to bring people from Africa to the United States and into bondage. From February to July 1860, the Clotilda carried 110 people from present-day Benin to the shores of Mobile, despite an 1808 U.S. law banning the import of slaves. In late May, a one-of-a-kind bark shield dating back to the Iron Age was unearthed in England. Archaeologists described the artifact as lost technology. The bark shield measured 67 centimeters or 26.3 inches long and 37 centimeters or 14.5 inches wide when it was still in the ground. The manufacturer of the shield used wooden laves to stiffen it. The shield also featured an edging rim made of wood and a woven stud at the center called a boss to protect the shield's wooden handle. On June 8th, it was announced that an underground city partly submerged underwater and estimated to be around 5,000 years old was discovered by municipality crews trying to determine the cause of flooding in several houses. Initial examinations revealed that the underground city had three floors and was comprised of homes, tunnels, and places of worship stretching for five kilometers in addition to a small human figurine believed to be an icon. In mid-June, scientists in South Africa discovered 8,000-year-old carvings made by a group of humans inside the world's biggest meteorite impact crater. The carvings of animals were discovered in the rain snake dike of the Fredefort structure and are believed to have had spiritual significance relating to rainmaking. At 190 miles wide, the Fredefort structure is the largest verified impact crater on Earth. It was made by an asteroid between 6 and 9 miles wide and was traveling at almost 43,500 miles per hour when it hit over 2 billion years ago. In late June, German and Kurdish archaeologists uncovered a 3,400-year-old Bronze Age palace on the eastern bank of the Tigris River in one of the most important recent archaeological finds in the region. The site of Kamun on the eastern Tigris can be dated to the time of the Mitanni Empire, which dominated large parts of northern Mesopotamia and Syria from the 15th to the 14th century BCE. On July 18th, archaeologists claim they found the Church of the Apostles, which Christian tradition says had been built over the home of Jesus' disciples, Peter and Andrew, in the village of Bethsaida by the Sea of Galilee. The ruins have not been precisely dated yet, but based on more than 100 coins, the church seems to have been built in the 5th century, nearly 500 years after the apostles would have lived and to have been abandoned in the late 7th century or 8th century. On July 26, a mysterious destroyed temple was discovered in the ruins of an ancient Egyptian city that sunk into the sea some 1,200 years ago. The sunken city of Heracleon, also dubbed the Egyptian Atlantis, was lost in the waters off Egypt's north coast for centuries until it was first uncovered in 2000. Constant studies have been undertaken at the location since the discovery, with researchers recently uncovering the remains of a Greek temple and treasure-laden ships at the underwater site.
On August 20th, we learned about a mural thought to be 3,800 years old, which was revealed by archaeologists in Peru. The wall was found inside a public ceremonial building at Vicama site north of Lima. The complex carved scene depicts iconography including a human-like toad and representations of people. In late August, it was announced that artifacts including stone tools and animal bone fragments found in Idaho, dating back 16,600 years, represent what may be the oldest evidence of humans in the Americas and offer insight into the routes people took as they spread into the New World. Scientists said they used radiocarbon dating to determine the age of artifacts unearthed at an archaeological site called Cooper's Ferry in western Idaho near the town of Cottonwood. People were present there at a time when large expanses of North America were covered by massive ice sheets. Ancient DNA evidence reveals that the people of the mysterious and complex Indus Valley civilization are genetically linked to modern South Asians today. The same gene sequences drawn from a single individual who died nearly 5,000 years ago and was buried in a cemetery in India also suggest that the Indus Valley developed farming independently without major migrations from neighboring farming regions. It's the first time an individual from the ancient Indus Valley civilization has yielded any DNA information whatsoever, enabling researchers to link the civilization both to its neighbors and to modern humans. On October 6, archaeologists in Israel announced that they had uncovered a 5,000-year-old city north of Tel Aviv. It is the largest Bronze Age urban area found in the region to date and could fundamentally change ideas of when sophisticated urbanization began taking place in the area. The archaeologists described the city as cosmopolitan and planned. It covered 160 acres and was home to about 6,000 people, which would have been a significant size for the era. Older ruins dating back 7,000 years were also found under the Bronze Age city. On October 19th, a team of Egyptian archaeologists found a distinctive group of 30 colored wooden coffins for men, women, and children on Luxor's West Bank. It is the first large human coffin cache ever discovered since the end of the 19th century. The intricately carved and painted 3,000-year-old coffins were closed with mummies inside and were in good condition of preservation, colors, and complete inscriptions. They were for male and female priests and children dating back to 1000 BCE under the rule of the 22nd Pharaonic Dynasty. On October 21st, we learned of the rediscovery of a city called Mahindra Parvata in Cambodia. The once mighty metropolis was one of the first capitals of the Khmer Empire, which ruled Southeast Asia between the 9th and 15th centuries. It was long believed that the ancient city was hidden beneath thick vegetation on a Cambodian mountain not far from the Temple of Angkor Wat. Now, thanks to an incredibly detailed map, Researchers can definitely say that the ruins overgrown by thick vegetation are in fact from that 1,000-year-old city. The ancient city was never really lost, as Cambodians have been making religious pilgrimages to the site for hundreds of years. A previously unknown Bronze Age monument has been discovered hidden in the Forest of Dean following an airborne laser scan. The ritual monument dates back to about 2000 BCE. It consists of a circular bank with several small limestone standing stones on top. Archaeologist John Hoyle, who found it, said it was the only site of its kind in the area and was a very significant discovery. On October 31st, an ancient temple estimated to be over 11,000 years old was found in eastern Turkey. 
The temple dating from the Neolithic period with four monuments was unearthed in Mardin, an area known to have been home throughout history to Sumerians, Akkadians, Babylonians, Hittites, Assyrians, Romans, and Ottomans, among others. Built with small stones and hardened clay floors, it belongs to the same time period as Gobekli Tempe, the famed oldest temple in the world. Britain's first city arose near an ancient spring on the Salisbury Plain, and the ancestors of its inhabitants probably built Stonehenge, experts believe. Blickmead lies just a mile away from the Wiltshire Stone Circle, and experts have uncovered more than 70,000 stone tools at the site, as well as an intriguing ceremonial platform suggesting the area held ritual importance for prehistoric hunter-gatherers who lived there 10,000 years ago. Although hunter-gatherer populations rarely settle in one place, scientist Dr. Albert Lynn believes the site could have been one of the first cities in Europe. On November 14th, archaeologists discovered a 3,000-year-old megalithic temple in Peru that an ancient water cult used for fertility rituals. The temple found at the Huaca El Toro archaeological site is located in modern-day northwestern Peru. It is the first megalithic temple found in this valley, which sits between two rivers that join together and give rise to the Zana River. The ancient cult, whose members worshipped the water, likely built the temple in an area where a new river rises as a kind of territorial symbolism. On November 18th, a sprawling humanoid-shaped character etched into the Peruvian desert was discovered by a team of scientists using artificial intelligence. The geoglyph is one of hundreds of diverse shapes carved into a swath of Peru and called the Nazca Lines. It appears to depict a human-like individual with a rectangular head who is holding a stick and wearing a headdress. The Japanese team has found 143 new lines since 2006. The fact that irrigation systems and roads crisscross the Nazca region makes the geoglyphs hard to detect. What makes the discovery of the newest Nazca line special is how it was discovered. The team used an artificial intelligence powered by IBM's Watson machine learning accelerator. On November 21st, a monument believed to be around 8,000 years old was unearthed in northwestern Turkey, according to the head of an excavation team. This structure is an important discovery both for the Aegean Islands and western Anatolia. The T-shaped monument is an obelisk made of two pieces interconnected by seven meter long walls. It resembles the standing stones in Gobekli Tepe. On December 11th, researchers discovered cave paintings depicting what may be part animal part human figures, decked out with animal snouts, hunting wild pigs and dwarf buffaloes in Indonesia. These may be the oldest known examples of rock art a new study finds. The 44,000-year-old artwork may also be the oldest evidence for the human ability to imagine the existence of supernatural beings, scientists added. On December 12th, a rare statue of the ancient Egyptian pharaoh Ramses II was discovered near Giza. The pink granite statue, which is almost three and a half feet tall, was found to have the symbol Ka, thought to be an aspect of the soul or spirit by the civilization. This discovery is considered one of the rarest archaeological discoveries. It is the first ever Ka statue made of granite to be discovered. The only Ka statue that was previously found is made of wood and it belongs to one of the kings of the 13th dynasty of ancient Egypt. On December 18th, an ancient stone slab from an excavation of a temple just outside of Jerusalem could have connections to the Ark of the Covenant 
experts believe. The Ark of the Covenant is, according to the Bible, a gold-covered wooden chest which is said to contain the two stone tablets which have the Ten Commandments inscribed on them, as mentioned in the book of Exodus. Other biblical items, such as Aaron's rod, which is said to have superpowers, is said to be in the mythical chest. Now researchers have stated that they have discovered the table which the Ark of the Covenant rested on inside the Bet Shemesh temple, as mentioned in the first book of Samuel. Archaeologists discovered the apparent slab while excavating the 12th century BC temple, which was intentionally desecrated by the Philistines, who were at war with the Israelites and turned the temple into a pen for animals. Researchers at Tel Aviv University made the biblical discovery, saying all the pieces appear as if they fit together. On December 21st, archaeologists discovered two magnificent 3,500-year-old royal tombs in the shadow of the palace of the legendary King Nestor of Pylos. It's not clear exactly who the tomb's owners were, but their contents, gold and bronze, amber from the Baltic and amethyst from Egypt, suggest wealth, power, and far-flung trade connections in the Bronze Age world. And the images engraved on many of those artifacts may eventually help us better understand the Mycenaean culture that preceded classical Greece. <laughs>